today's tutorial, we're going to go over flow mapping. Let's start out by talking about what flow mapping is. We've got our water shader here, and it has some pretty nice looking ripples on it. But the ripples don't really have any main direction. They're just sort of generic ripples. But what if we want to make a stream or a river that has a specific direction of flow? Or if we need to define more precisely what direction the water is flowing in? Well, we can do that with a flow map. What we do is we paint a texture where each pixel represents the flow direction. And then we create a shader to use that direction to move our ripple texture. So the first thing that we need to do is create the flow map. And we can do that with a program called Flow Map Painter. So here's Flow Map Painter, and it's a free program that was created by a tech artist named Tech Lee Tan. You can download Flow Map Painter from his website. I'll put that link down in the description. So what this software allows me to do is paint brush strokes. And as I paint, you can see that it's turning my strokes into direction. So this texture is actually flowing in the direction that my strokes are going. So what I need to do is I'm just going to increase the radius of my brush here and I'm going to fill my whole texture with just a little bit of flowing direction uh, just to give myself a place to start. And then maybe I'll turn my radius down back down just a little bit and create a little bit more specific direction. And right now I'm using the preview mode that shows me uh, kind of what my texture will look like or what the results of the flow will look like when I'm done. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to uh, this other view mode that's called vert color. And what this is showing you is the direction vectors represented as color. So you can see that it's converted my strokes into these colors where the X, the Y, and the Z of the color represent the directional vector. There's also this other preview mode called flow lines where you can see the lines of the flow direction. That's a little bit nicer way of previewing uh, which way the flow map is going. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do once we've painted what we want here in Flow Map Painter, uh, I can hit this Bake to Texture button and it's gonna bake out my results as a texture map. Oh, you know, there's one thing that I forgot. We need to check this flip red box here uh, before we bake to texture. And this is gonna export a flow map that is in the format that the Unreal Engine needs to be able to work correctly. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is switch over to Unreal and bring in our flow map. So I've imported my flow map texture and there are a couple of settings that are really important to set. You can see maybe that uh, when I zoom in here on the flow map that the, the, the gradients aren't very smooth because they're being compressed by the texture compression. And so what I need to do is instead of using the default DXT1, DXT5 compression settings, I need to drop this down and set it to be a normal map. And that's going to do two things for us. It's going to make the vectors not be compressed quite as much. And it's also going to uh, expand the color from a range of 0 to 1 to a range of negative 1 to 1, which is what my vectors need to be for a proper flow map. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is jump into uh, creating our flow map shader. Now. Unreal does have some flow map functions built in that you can use, uh, but today we're going to go over the math that's uh, at work inside those functions. So instead of just using Unreal's built in functions, I'm going to build my own and walk you through it step by step so you can see how it works. The first thing that I need to do is bring in my flow map texture. So I'm going to add a texture sample here and drop this down and select my flow map. And then the next thing that I need to do is uh, we're just going to use the R and the G from this. So I'm going to create a component mask and just leave that set to R and the G because we only need the X and the Y components of our flow map in this case. 
And the next thing that I'm going to do is add a multiplier. And this constant is a value that I can use to control how strong the flow map influences uh, the flow of the texture. So I'm just going to use a hard-coded 0.25 for now. But later when I turn this into a function, I'm actually going to expose this value so that you can set the strength to whatever you need it to be. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is add this flow to my UV coordinates. So I'm going to add an add node and bring in my texture coordinates. All right, and then this is the very uh, most basic version of a flow map shader. I took these directions and then I'm adding them to the texture coordinates. If I were to use my texture coordinates to sample my texture, uh, I'm just using this, uh, this noise texture for now and I'll pass that into the base color so you can see what it looks like. So you can see I just have a little bit of noise. This is the same texture that I used for the distortion shader in episode four. Uh, and you can download this texture. I'll put the link in the description. I'm not going to put this texture in the description for you to download because I would prefer you to download Flow Map Painter and create one yourself. All right, back to our shader. Uh, you can see that I've just got my texture coordinates plugged into my texture sample. But if I add the Flow Map directions to the texture coordinates, now you can see that my texture is kind of warped. It's pushing the UVs in the direction of the flow map. And that's the effect that we're looking for. Now what we actually want to do is animate this. We need to push the UVs over time. And so what I need to do is add a time node to bring in the time from the engine. And I need to multiply the distance by time. So I'm going to add a multiply node here and connect time to that and then wire that in to add to my UV coordinates. Now you're going to see here that the result is just absolutely insane and that's because this time value is actually pretty high. So I'm adding a whole lot of distance to my UV coordinates here. I need to clamp that down and control it a little bit by adding a frac node. I'm going to add a frac and what this will do is time will go from 0 to 1 and when it gets to 1 it'll jump back to 0 again. So let's connect that up to our multiply and we'll see what's happening here. Alright so now we have some nice animation. You can see that our texture is moving along and when time gets to 1 it pops back to 0. So we can see that the flow is working really nicely, but there is that kind of ugly looking pop and we need to figure out how to get rid of that. And the way that we're going to get rid of that uh, is by using two different phases of time. So we're going to take our time here and right before the frack, we're going to add 0.5 to it. So I'm going to add an add node, I'm going to add a constant node, and I'm going to add a, a constant of 0.5. So this will be phase one, and then down here will be phase two. And for phase two, I need a frac for that as well. And so this is going to clamp it between zero and one. But this phase is 0.5 into the future offset from this phase. Can you see how that's working? Okay, so I need to do the same thing with uh, phase two as I did with phase one. So I'm going to copy these nodes here and I'm going to multiply in my flow map direction and multiply that by my time offset by the 0.5 of the phase. And then I'm going to add that to my texture coordinates. And so now I have two samples of the same noise texture. And both of them are being distorted by my flow map. Uh, but one of them is offset by 0.5 in the phase. So if you look at it here, they're both going to look the same. And now what I need to do is 
lerp between these two noise textures um, so that in the part of the phase where the first one is popping, we blend to the second one. And in the part of the phase where that second one is popping, we blend back to the first one. So I'm going to add a linear interpolate node here, and we're going to blend between this first noise node and the second noise node. But we need a value for for blending, and, or we need to create a mask for when to blend between these two textures. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the output of this frac here, and I'm going to multiply by 2 and subtract 1. And then I'm going to take the absolute value of this. And what this is going to do, it, do is give us a mask that ping pongs back and forth. And I can show you what that looks like if we uh, just connect that up. You can see that it's going back and forth between 0 and 1. And I can use this as my lerp alpha value. So I'm going to connect that up. And then we'll take a look at what the result of this lerp looks like. Ahaha! Ha, success! So you can see that um, when my first sample is about to pop, this lerp value blends to the second sample. And then when the second sample is about to pop, it blends us back to our first sample. So you can see that I now have a working flow map and it is blending between my two noise samples. So the next thing that we need to do is create or take this shader logic and create a function out of it. And then we need to use that function in our water shader. And I've already created the function, so let's switch over to that and take a look and I'll show you what I did. So here's my flow map function. You can see that I created an input, which is a vector two for my flow map. And it's a vector two because I only need the X and the Y components. And then I multiply that by this uh, input strength scalar. This is the guy that I was telling you about before that you can use to control the strength. And I set it to 0.25 and I've also set this one to default to 0.25. All right, then here's our time node and I'm using just the regular time node as the default for our time input scalar. And then I take the frac of that and I multiply it by our uh, flow map vectors. And then I add that to our UV coordinates. This is just like what we had before. And then I have another one that's offset by 0.5 and that becomes our UV1 output. And then I generate my lerp value and output that as well. So the lerp value is multiply by two, subtract one, and then uh, give that the absolute value. All right, so that's my function. And so now we can come to our water shader and actually apply the function. And I've already done that down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna show you what's happening here. Here's our flow map that we brought in that we painted in Flow Map Painter. And here is the function that we created So I've connected my flow map up to my function, and then I've got my UV coordinates. So this is the, the UV coordinates that are applied to my water plane. And I just multiplied those by 1.4 to get some proper scaling for the ripples. And then here's my first UV set and my second UV set. And instead of sampling the noise like we did in our test shader here, in this case, we're sampling our water ripple normal maps. And then I'm lurking between the first sample and the second sample using the output of our lerp value. Now here, we are creating the ripples like we did a couple of tutorials ago in the, the water ripples tutorial. Um, we're using three sets of, lerp, uh, of ripples, uh, but here we're just using one set and we're ping-ponging back and forth between this one. So I can use this and replace what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to plug this into the normal of my water. And for now, I'm going to get rid of my world displacement. And you can do displacement if you want, but I'm going to remove it for now just so that you can see uh, the results of the flow mapping a little bit more clearly. So let's save this and take a look at what it's done to our water shader. All right, so what you can see 
is that my water is now flowing in the direction that I painted in the flow map painter software. So you can see it's flowing kind of uh, forcefully in this direction over here and then it flows kind of softly in this direction over here and by painting that flow map texture I'm able to define exactly which way the water flows. That's pretty cool. It's, it's really nice. And you can see in this particular area right here it's not flowing at all so that's probably something that I would want to fix. So this flow map that you can see here is just kind of a generic one but if I were actually doing this in production the way that I would handle that is by switching here in my perspective view I would switch to the top view instead and then I would take a screenshot of this top view and I would crop it in Photoshop and then I would switch over to flow map painter again and there's this path here for overlay texture and you have to actually have to type in the path so I would have to type in C colon slash and then the path to that texture and then I could hit load overlay texture here and what that would do is it would overlay my screenshot of my environment here in flow map painter and so what I would be able to do is see where all my rocks are and all of the different parts of my level and then I could use flow map painter to paint around the rocks so that I could get a flow map that was specifically customized to my level um, so this overlay texture wouldn't show up in the texture that I bake out um, but it would serve as a reference point so that I could see exactly where I wanted to paint my flow map so that's how flow mapping works. You paint your flow map in flow map painter and then you import the texture into uh, Unreal and then you use the function that you created to uh, map that flow map to the surface of your water. And you end up with something that looks pretty cool. It works really well if you need to directly control which direction things are flowing. And I really like the result. So that's the end of today's tutorial. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Uh, if you'd like what you see, be sure to subscribe to the channel and come back next Thursday where we'll have a brand new, new tutorial. See you next week, everybody.